So I'm sure you're really keen to get stuck in and start writing some code within Laravel. But there's a couple of things we need to just set up just to make sure that when we are learning or just developing a website, we have the best experience possible. And that involves installing a virtual machine. Now you might be thinking, well, why do I need to do this? Can't I just run this on my local machine? Well, you can, but using a virtual machine makes the process so much easier and less troublesome once you have it all set up. Now it does take a little bit of time just to get everything set up. So I'd recommend just putting aside some time to get this sorted on whatever operating system you're using. So we use something called Laravel Homestead. Now to understand what Laravel Homestead is, we first want to take a look at two things, one which is VirtualBox and the other which is Vagrant. And these are pretty straightforward to use. VirtualBox you'll never interact with, so don't worry too much. Vagrant we'll talk about in just a moment. So if you've never worked with a virtual machine before, it's literally just a kind of uh, machine. So it acts and runs an operating system. It acts like a normal machine, but within your computer. So that's, I guess, the easiest way to describe it. Now, Vagrant, think of it as a layer on top. It allows you to really quickly and easily create these environments. What you'll first of all need to do is go ahead and install VirtualBox. It's really straightforward to just download it and install it for all operating systems. And the same with Vagrant as well. Really easy kind of one click install uh, or download and install. So once you've got these two things up and running, we then talk about Laravel Homestead, which is a pre-configured box for Vagrant. So remember VirtualBox is your machine, Vagrant is your kind of interface to create environments and Laravel Homestead is a virtual machine that's pre-set up for you with everything you need. Now more about the reason we're doing this, if you say run uh, Laravel on your local machine, maybe on like XAMPP or MAMP or WAMP or whatever, what you're doing is you're developing in an environment that probably won't match what you have when you put this onto a server. Whereas when you use a predefined box, and I'm gonna to refer to uh, what we're installing here as a box, then you have everything you need. So we will cover basically installing Laravel Homestead using Vagrant, and we'll start with a very basic command just to check that we have Vagrant installed. So go ahead, pause the video, download VirtualBox, download Vagrant, um, in the command line, when you are ready, we're going to run Vagrant V. And that will give us a version number. So we know now that Vagrant is installed. So the next step then is to add the Laravel Homestead box, which remembers just a predefined uh, kind of setup. It contains Ubuntu. It contains a patch, uh, Nginx, uh, which is a, a web server. It contains everything you need so you don't need to worry about installing anything so once we have everything set up we then want to pull in our box so we know now that we've got vagrant installed all we do is head over to the laravel documentation here under homestead and i'll put a link in the course description and we just run vagrant box add laravel homestead so this just creates a kind of virtual machine uh, install for us that we can then boot up later so once you've done this, you'll see we can either use VirtualBox or VMware. I recommended VirtualBox and I'd stick by that I'd recommend using it. So we just enter one, really straightforward. And now, depending on the speed of your internet connection, just go ahead and wait for this to download. So once it has downloaded, come back to the video and we'll carry on with getting everything else set up as well. So now that that has finished downloading, we now have the Laravel Homestead box installed. So what we now need to do is look at actually installing the Homestead files that we need. And these are gonna be responsible for booting everything up and basically where we would go to modify our sites that we wanted to create and all of that good stuff. And we'll be looking, uh, of course, at how we do that. So we need to use this command. You need to make sure you have Git installed. If you don't already, just go ahead and download that and install it. And what we want to do is come over to a suitable directory. Now I'm currently within my home directory. So I'm gonna choose 
this as a place to uh, put everything. So let's go ahead and just run this command and that will clone into a folder called Homestead. So once this is finished, all done, we can go and CD into it. So the next step then is to run init.sh. Now if you're not using a Linux based machine, then you may need to figure this out on Windows, but either way, uh, this should be pretty straightforward. So we're just going to run this and there we go, Homestead has been initialized. So what does this actually mean then? Well, if we just list this directory, let's look at some of the files that we have in here. Now, this is a little bit different to older Homestead versions. Usually what we defined in here is a YAML file. So a configuration file that basically tells us what our sites are, what databases we want to create and all of that kind of stuff. Now, instead with newer versions, if we just go back into my home directory, we now have a .homestead directory. So if we look in here, you can see sure enough, we have homestead.yaml. So let's go and open this up with Sublime. Of course, you can do this in the terminal or open it with whichever text editor you're using. But this is where you're gonna spend your time when you want to create a new site. Now, we're gonna explore this. We're gonna look at what everything does. And we'll also then run through creating a site and then getting it up in the browser. But the first thing that we want to do is create a folder where all of our files will live. So why don't we do this now just before we forget. So I'm going to go back into my home directory and I'm going to create a directory called code. You can call this whatever you want. Day-to-day -day use I have www, which I have here. But for now we'll run with the example code. So our Homestead YAML directory, we have an IP for our virtual machine. We have the memory and CPUs. We don't really need to touch this to be honest. And our provider here, we won't want to touch either because we know that we're using VirtualBox. We have key authentication because you're essentially just going to go into another machine. Uh, this basically represents your key authentication into that machine. So in our case, uh, on a Linux machine, we have this uh, public key just here, and then we have a private key here. So we can kind of ignore this for now. If you're working on Mac or, or some kind of Linux system, this should be relatively simple. What we're most interested in is kind of day-to-day -day stuff is this folders and sites section. So folders is where we sync all of our files on our local machine to our virtual machine. And this is incredibly quick. So you can day-to-day -day write code within your text editor from your local machine. So you don't need to write all of the code inside of your virtual machine. That would be a little bit annoying. And then it's all synced over to your virtual machine. So by this, what we can do is sync the code directory, which I've just created here, to home vagrant code. So whenever I create a file inside of that code directory, so inside of here, this will be synced to my virtual machine. So unless you want to get into much more advanced usage, then this should be fine. You shouldn't need to touch this again. So kind of day to day when we are building projects, inside of the code directory, let's say ooh, we want to create uh, some kind of sharing site. Well, we'll create a directory called sharing. And then what happens if we want to create, say, some kind of video upload site? Well, we'll create the, uh, a directory to represent that as well. So these are essentially just going to be each site. Think of each folder in here as each site. So let's just go and remove them. Like so. So we now have an empty directory. Now the site section is more important and every time you start a new project you're going to want to add to this. So for example, let's say we want to create a test app and we want to sync this on our virtual machine to home vagrant code and it doesn't have to be a Laravel uh, project so you could use this for non-Laravel projects. But in this case it might be say fresh or it might be test whatever the name of the directory that you've created is so hopefully this makes sense but I can understand that at start it does take a little bit of time to get your head around this kind of stuff so we're gonna see how this affects everything when we boot up our virtual machine and also provision it if we make any changes here and we'll see how this all works so we also have the option to create databases as well now by default you'll have a homestead database but of course you could create a database here called test or if you were developing another site you'd create another option here so we'll keep this as test for now 
Um, of course, you can go ahead and fiddle around with this, but let's just see what this does. Okay, so now that we've got this all out of the way, how do we actually boot up our virtual machine? Well, let's head back into our home directory and let's go into the actual homestead directory, not the dot homestead directory that we're already editing this file in. So within here, this is where we control our virtual machine. So we can use something like vagrant up to boot our machine up and then the virtual machine will be accessible by this IP. But what we want to do is we want to create a domain so we can develop on something like test.app or cocourse.app. So once you have edited your homestead.yaml file, if you are just following along, create a test.app or we could actually call this fresh because that's the name of the application that we're going to be developing throughout the series. So let's go ahead and just change these over like so. So once you've got this all good and done, we want to boot up our virtual machine and this is where things start to get a little bit tricky. So I've actually come across an error here. I'm just going to take a look. So it looks like uh, the IDRSA private key couldn't be opened. So that's probably a problem with that not existing. So let's head over to the SSH directory and you can see here that in fact it doesn't. I have some other keys in here, but of course I don't have IDRSA. Now I could go ahead and use one of these or if you're in the position where you need to generate one, you just want to use SSH keygen T R S A, and then you want to give your say email address. So I'll just say Alex at codecourse.com. So now it'll ask me where I want to save it, and this is where I want to save it. And then we can enter an optional passphrase, but we don't want to do that. So now I have IDRSA, my private key, and IDRSA, my public key, which is what's in here by default. Of course, if you have an existing key, you can go ahead and use them. So now I'm going to go back over to that homestead directory and do a vagrant up. And we should see our machine boot up using that homestead box. Great, so that has finished. If you do see some red errors here, don't worry too much about these. Um, I have these because like the homestead uh, database already exists and all that kind of stuff, but don't worry too much. You know when things have gone correctly if you can SSH into your machine. Now, you may have worked with SSH before, SSH into a server. It's exactly the same thing. We have a kind of foreign machine sitting on our uh, machine at the moment, and we can SSH into that. So now I'm within my virtual machine. So let's take a look around. You can see here when I list the directory, uh, I automatically have this code directory. Now, of course, we know that that's the same as the files on our machine. So we're syncing them now. So let's just open up a new tab and let's go over to code. So inside of here then there's nothing. Let me just touch a file really quickly just to demonstrate this. In fact, that should be PHP. Let's get rid of that one. So we now have this file. So now over in our virtual machine, let's go into code and you see we have that file in there. So this is what it's doing. Uh, let's just go ahead and delete that over here and it's gone so it's syncing the files from our local machine so if we want to we can on our local machine say well I'm ready to start working on a project you can just open that directory in your text editor and everything will be synced over to your virtual machine so that's all well and good but how do we start to actually access this in the browser well our goal really is to end up with something like this fresh.app on port 8000 this is what how we want to work on our site. We want to open that folder in our text editor, write code and see it here. So we're accessing this on port 8000. Now the reason we're doing that is on our local machine, Nginx will be running on port 80. But what happens is it's mapped to this particular port. So rather than use port 80, 8000 will then translate to port 80, but on our virtual machine. So at the moment, obviously, this isn't working. We don't have any files set up, but this might not even be working for you. The reason being is if we just open up a new tab, we need to modify our hosts file for this to work. You'll probably not even be able to see this. So let's go and just open up Etsy hosts in Sublime. And again, if you're using a different operating system, this will be different for you. You can see here I have an entry pointing here 
and it's called fresh.app. So if you don't have this, it won't work. So let's just go and save this. You can see we just have an endless loading. Uh, this will eventually just error. So that's why. So all we need to do is once we have created a site, we need to go and say fresh.app or whatever we called it within here, like this. And we just add it to here and then it should just work. And you can see here we get no input file specified. Now the reason we don't get no input file specified is because we don't have any files. So remember we synced uh, or mapped fresh.app to vagrant code, which we're in fresh public. So this will kind of be the name of the Laravel project and then public will be the entry point into your Laravel application. But just to test this out, why don't we create a fresh directory manually and a public directory manually and then just create a file in there just so we can see it being accessed in the browser. Now, of course, in the next part, we'll look at actually installing Laravel, so you won't need to worry about this. But as long as you know that everything's working in your virtual machine, you're good to go. So I'm currently within my virtual machine. If you are not inside of it, do a vagrant SSH, go over to the code directory. We're going to make a directory called fresh because we know that that's where our domain here points to. And then we're going to go into fresh. We're going to make a new directory called public and we're going to go into that. We're going to create a file called index.php. And now we have that. And we'll go and open it with Sublime. Well, we can't do that within here because we're within our virtual machine and my Sublime shortcut doesn't work. But if we go over to our local machine, we can go into fresh, into public, and we can open index.php from there. So now let's just say echo, it works. And now heading over here, we see it works. So once you're this far, that is it. In the next part, we'll look at actually installing Laravel, which makes a lot more sense. So everything will be done. We'll just do that all inside of a virtual machine. And when you head over to the site that you create, as long as you've added it to your hosts file, you'll be ready to go. There's one more thing I want to touch on, and that is accessing your database. Now, remember earlier we spoke about inside of our Homestead file, creating these databases. Well, since our MySQL installation or server is running inside of our virtual machine, how do we access it? Well, of course, what we could do is do this from within our virtual machine using the MySQL on the command line. So you could technically do this using Homestead, provide a password. The password happens to be secret and we're inside. So we can show databases we spell that correctly and there we go so we have our fresh database in there we have our homestead directory and now just standard mysql uh, databases but that's kind of unrealistic when we're developing we want to use something like sql pro to do this or whatever else you're using so in my case what we're going to do is connect to 127.0.0.1 we know that our uh, ports are mapped over so we access this with 8000 in the browser and the standard MySQL port is 3306 but it's mapped from 33060 to 33306 so we want to provide that so the host then that you want to connect to with whatever software you're using is just your local IP the username is homestead the password is literally secret like that and that's it so we can hit connect and we go through so now I can go over to my fresh database and within Laravel, when we start using migrations to create databases, we'll have uh, the visibility of all of these. So that is it, pretty much it. Of course, you can find loads of help online with getting this kind of thing set up, depending on the operating system that you're using. It just so happens that it's a lot easier to do on like a Mac or something, but it is installable on Windows so it doesn't matter which operating system you're using hopefully you can get things set up and ready to go